So what is going on guys, NandoBrits93 here with another video and today we got episode 3. So we've talked about Microsoft Word, we've talked about Microsoft PowerPoint on the iPad Pro and today we're going to touch on Excel, alright? So this one's going to be a little bit of a longer one because I know a lot of people want to know about Excel and some of the capabilities and the limitations that come with it, right? So just to break, break it to you early, if you're coming here to try to figure out how to use pivot tables on Excel, unfortunately you cannot create a pivot table from scratch, but you can edit and manipulate current and already active pivot tables that are shared with you. So that is the number one answer to the number one question for the iPad Pro, but the rest of it is gonna be a walkthrough. It's gonna be, again, walk, talking about some of the new updates that come with the beta version, and then again, some of the limitations that we still have with Microsoft Excel. But overall, I'm extremely happy with it and all the strides that it's come with over time, because when I, we first got the native iPad version of Excel, boy, was it terrible. So let's hop right into it, guys. So guys, today we're going to talk about Microsoft Excel beta for the iPad Pro. People have been asking me when these betas are going to release. I'm not 100% sure when they're going to release, and they might even be out at this point, but I know that I'm using the beta versions of these applications to go through all these different walkthroughs and show you the capabilities of the Microsoft Suite on your iPad Pro. So again, I'm going to show you guys the actual test flight. So we're going into here. I can show you guys that I'm on Microsoft Excel version 2.43 and then a bunch of different numbers after that which is like the beta number right so application details it gives you everything you need to know right here and that's pretty much it so i'm going to open up a microsoft excel sheet and walk you guys through some of the updates that they had right so i'm going to go back delete this draft and bring you basically to the home screen right i am logged in to my microsoft suite account so everything that involves my microsoft account my files anything on onedrive is accessible through microsoft excel directly right but i kind of just want to show you guys first Let's hop into a regular Excel sheet, right? As you can see, we're getting the same updates that we got on all the other ones that I talked about on Word and on PowerPoint. We now finally have that 13.4 and higher cursor support. So these applications worked with the cursor, but they weren't working the way Apple intended the cursor to work with their applications, right? So if you guys can go across the toolbar now, you'll see that the cursor is now adopting that technology that Apple wanted everybody to adopt when they sent out all those API kits to everybody, right? So basically the cursor now works how it's supposed to. The only real difference that I've noticed between this and then Apple's version of Excel, which I believe is Numbers, but I could be totally wrong, that might be Google's version, but Apple's version of Excel, the cursor does adopt every single cell. So if I go with my cursor on Apple's version of Excel, then it'll highlight the cursor that I'm over. So, but that's really the only difference when it comes to cursor support, and it really doesn't make a difference at all. But a couple more things that I do want to touch on in terms of the cursor, right? As you guys can see, if I hover over here, it turns a cursor into that type cursor. So that line to show you where you are in terms of where text is laid out. And then another thing that I do want to show you guys is we finally get a little bit more keyboard help, right? Before, the only way to highlight multiple cells in Excel was to click and drag, right? Which is fine. You know, that's a normal functionality of any Excel file. But a lot of people are used to using, like, clicking here and then using the shift key. So holding down the shift key and then pressing on the screen, right? So now that functionality works. I know it's something simple something that we take for granted, but for some reason it wasn't in the iPad Pro or the iPad OS version of Excel for a very long time. So things like that are just getting a little bit easier, right? And you also get some keyboard functionality or some keyboard shortcut functionality. Unfortunately, so if I go out of the Excel sheet and I hold down my command button, it, these shortcuts pop up, right? Because it knows that it's on the home screen. These are the different shortcuts that you can do for your home screen. And that normally works for a lot of other applications. So if I open up the Files app and I hold down Command, it gives you all these different shortcuts within that file or within that application. But when I go into Excel and then hold down that command key, nothing pops up. And it's not because it doesn't have any shortcuts because for instance, if I grab my pencil, press on the screen, start to draw, if I press control Z, it goes away. So that's a shortcut and control C works for copy, control X, control V. I haven't really done too, too much, but if I do control T, it shows a, a bunch of other things. So and then control Z, it goes away. So shortcuts to an extent do work. So keep that in mind. But for some reason, I have not been able to find out exactly what each one does. If I do find a link that kind of walks you through every single shortcut, or at least kind of like a glossary of what every shortcut does, I'll put that in the description below, guys. But if we continue on, I'm gonna go just, first of all, we're going through basic Excel functions, right? Very basic Excel functions. I do wanna show you guys some charts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a chart real quick. All right, guys, so I just have a simple little chart right here, a simple little data set, right? So I got my x-axis, which is height, my y-axis, which is the weight, 
And what I want to do is create a chart for you guys. So I'm going to go here, hold shift down, highlight my data set. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into insert. And then all of a sudden I can go into charts, right? So these are all my chart options that I wanted to show you guys. And a lot of people had questions on how the chart functionality is, how, how comparable it is to any other one. So what I'm going to do first is just a simple line graph. So it gives you all the different options right here, different fonts, different layouts. And I'm going to click on just the regular one right here. So it basically gives me the weight on one side and then the height on the other side, which is really nice. And it automatically changes the X axis to kind of fit everything and make it a little bit easier to read which is fine in my opinion, but overall, this is what a chart looks like. You can move it around, you can control C, you can copy it, add it to a new table. It's right here, so you can move it around just like any other one, you can make it bigger. You can even click on it, and then on the top here, the toolbar changes, right? It changes to the, the chart formatting, so it lets you change the types of it, it lets you change out the layout, right? So if I wanna add points to it, that's super nice. I can change different elements, like maybe add access titles, right here. I can do whatever need be in order to make this chart look like how I want it to look like. I can even switch to different axes, which is cool. Again, more styles, change the color. So chart functionality is there. I'm going to delete that, go back to the first sheet, delete that one also. So just a quick little rundown on what the charts are, but then I do want to continue to go on with the toolbar, right? The toolbar works just like any other one. Again, I'm going to highlight this, you know, we can bold all of them. We can italicize it. We can underline every single one. We can add all borders everywhere and you can see now that that has every single thing that I just added to it correct and then I can even again highlight it all fill in the color very quickly right grab one of these colors boom we're in blue you can barely see it let's control Z and undo with a shortcut um, it gives you all the different type of text formatting that you would ever want move everything to the middle paragraphs indentations cell styles and the, the list kind of just goes on guys and I really really like that and then when I go to insert, right, this is the, the second main option right here. These are all just different things that you can add into here. You know, you can add a table if you would like, and it basically just takes the table that I already have and makes it bigger. You can automatically change the column size, change the filters. It turns it into a table for you, right? So I'm going to Apple Z that because I want to stop that. Uh, so if I go back to into insert, you can get data from picture. So it smartly analyzes information from a picture. So if you have a credit card number or just a document, with a bunch of numbers and text and data. You can just take a picture and it'll bring it into here. You can add photos, you can access the camera. We can throw some shapes in here, you know, a triangle. And you can see that the cursor is adopting whatever the cursor needs to adopt into. So you can see this is to make it bigger, much bigger. We can move it around, ready? Rotate it however I want. And that's a big play button, which hopefully, hopefully we'll get one of these days, right guys? And then again, every time you go into a new element, the toolbar changes. So all of a sudden you see if I get out of here, there's nothing to the right of the view option on the toolbar. But if I go onto the image, boom, all of a sudden you have a shape. And before that, you guys noticed that it's a chart because I was working with the chart. So if I go back into insert, get out of here, you know, you have the text box. You even have a bunch of different icons, which are nice to have in there. I'm always a big fan of icons, especially during PowerPoint when you have to get stuff done and be and get it done with pictures. Then you have the recommended file. So if, maybe if I click on here, go to insert, see what it says for recommended. Nothing because I have zero data in that picture. If I go here, let's see what happens. If I press recommended, it'll give me different types of graphs that it recommends. So again, let's do a new graph, right? I want a scatter plot graph. I have this scattered plot graph and I'm able to kind of edit it as I go, right? Change the colors up a little bit, turn them to gray, really nice, different styles. So maybe I want a, a dark background, throw that in there. Again, more 3D circles. Uh, I can switch everything, move everything forward back, and then I can even change the layout of everything. So if I want to throw a regression line in there, boom, there's a linear regression line that shows you the height and the weight and how it correlates to each other, guys. I know I'm getting a little bit nerdy, bringing me back to my high school math days. But if we continue on in the insert function, again, that's pretty much it. You can add a comment as well if you are sharing this file through your OneDrive. So the next thing I'm gonna do is draw. And what I love about draw is even if you're out of it, for instance, I pick up my pencil, tap on the screen and all of a sudden I'm in draw mode. It, so it recognizes when I'm using the Apple Pencil with the screen. And also, big shout out to channel sponsor Paperlike because Paperlike has made everything from a handwriting perspective that much better, right? So I'm right back into it. So I highly recommend getting Paperlike if you guys are using an Apple Pencil with your iPad. It makes that experience that much better, that much more realistic. And it also stops with, the, with all the glare with that shiny iPad screen and also protects your iPad screen, which is the biggest seller and the biggest asset of your device, in my opinion. But if we continue on here, again, you can handwrite whatever you want. So sub to the 
channel. And then again, if I hold it down, it takes every individual letter. As you guys can see, moving it around and making that B huge. If I press the T, so it kind of takes every single one separately, which is a little bit different from what we saw in PowerPoint and Word. Word kind of brought everything together and made it one big image. This is using you know, its recognition and kind of doing each one individually. So I'm grabbing this U and moving it around. I'm grabbing this S and moving it around. And for that, I'm just holding down with my finger and moving it around. Now, one more thing that I do want to see is if it has that notes functionality of, let's say if I make a triangle and hold it down, it does not. So it won't auto correct, you know, a poor line or a poor drawing of a square like you can on the actual notes app for, from Apple. Another thing you can do is press draw with touch. So this right here, I'm using my finger to draw undo that now I'm using the pencil to draw and then it also still works with that double tap so if you double tap your pencil it changes to eraser and I'm erasing everything that I just wrote guys boom 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 and done so that's the pencil highly recommended if you guys are pencil users I'm definitely gonna have a Microsoft OneNote review and kind of walk through on how I use it with the Apple pencil but if we continue on go into our formulas for instance if I want to do over here let's go back to our little chart it equals the sum of 60 through this one, close that up, and all of a sudden I have my totals right here, and that is just what the formulas do for you guys. So we have auto sum, these are all the different recent ones that we use, you know, financial statement ones, and the list goes on and on. We can even get into engineering ones, statistics. Uh, like I said, it continues to go forward, guys. And then you even have a little calculator app right here. Another thing that I do want to continue before I go too far with the Apple Pencil is that Scribble does not work totally. So let's test it out together. Normally, I would hope that it, I can use Scribble on this little toolbar up here because it's somewhere that I can type in. But if I grab my pencil and start writing, it's not working, right? So as you can see, I'm pressing FFF, it's recognizing it, and then I try to do something with my pencil, it's not working. So Scribble does not work on the actual Excel stuff. But if I go into like a search function and say hello, then the search function Scribble works there. So it's a little bit strange in how it determines when Scribble works, when it doesn't. But if you're a huge Scribble user, then unfortunately Excel won't be for you. But I don't know how many people are huge Scribble users. So then we go into the data. Again, you can filter, you can sort by ascending or descending. Very, very self-explanatory. And then again, review pretty much deals with the how you collaborate on OneDrive and some of the comments that your colleagues or your coworkers or anybody else that's looking at your file can comment on. Okay, and then another thing that I do want to do is show you guys a second Excel sheet. So if I move this over, let's open up another blank workbook. So that was one of the big updates. So being able to use side-by-side -side Excel, can we get a third one? Let's find out. I haven't tested this out. And yeah, so we can have up to three Excel sheets running simultaneously, which again, like I say all the time, I don't know how many people need that, but it's, you know, it's there and it's something that you can deal with, right? So if I'm going back to my original sheet on the left-hand side, I want to see if I can kind of migrate data over very easily. So I'll go here. I'm going to copy my chart, copy, and the way I'm bringing that menu or that toolbar up is simply by pressing with two fingers on the, on the trackpad. And then over here, I'll just select the cell and I'm pressing control V and there is my chart or my, my table. The formula even stays how it is. That's really nice. And if I want to just grab this guy, I can't just move it over, but I can copy, press here and paste it over here. So I can't just grab it and move it over like I could with a PowerPoint slide because it was just a data set, but this. I'm able to copy it over again, control X if I want to, so I can cut it out, add another one in here. So again, some of the shortcuts work and I'll look into finding out maybe again, some sort of glossary or dictionary of all those different shortcuts. So we know that multitasking works and it works well. Unfortunately, I don't believe that I can copy entire sheets over. So if I'm going here on the bottom left, if I press on it, you can rename, duplicate, hide, move and delete. So if I duplicate it, it just duplicates it inside the sheet. If I move it, it just asks me to move it within that same Excel file. So unfortunately you cannot co copy entire Excel sheets, but what you can do is highlight, I believe, as much as you want of the Excel. And another thing that I like with Excel, especially on an iPad, is that with two fingers I can pinch and the Excel sheet becomes a lot more readable. So now I'm holding all this down. I'm gonna control C it, bring it over here. V, there it is with the triangle and everything. So as you guys can see, I'm zooming out with just two fingers. You can zoom out in the trackpad with two fingers on the screen. It's just working with an iPad on Excel is really nice because you can minimize, make maximize different size things and kind of just move around an Excel sheet a lot more freely than you could with a desktop, at least for me personally. And then the last few things that I do want to check out with you guys is how it works with the files app. So if I open this guy up, boom, I want to see if I can, again, throw an image in here, hold it down, drop it in, 
boom, I got an image. I can resize it to how I see fit, which is really nice. So it works with the Files app really easily. And then here we go. I have some sample data that I want to open up. So if I double tap that, I'm going to delete this draft because we don't need it, but it'll open up that sample data set for Excel. And then you can work off of this, right? This is why I like Excel on the iPad because sure, you're maybe not creating from scratch, you know, pivot tables or large documents or large data sets from scratch on your iPad. You definitely could, it's definitely possible, at least from a data set point side. You can't really do pivot tables quite yet. You can edit and manipulate pivot tables, but you cannot create pivot tables from your Excel application on your iPad Pro, unfortunately. But you can, like I said, edit them, manipulate them, and work on them on the go, which is why Excel on the iPad Pro is so amazing, guys. And the very final thing I wanna do is just show you how it works with OneDrive. So if I open up my OneDrive account again, uh, I can go into, it's just a little thing that I have going on here, open it up, again, minimize it so I can see what else is going on. And also, this is a shared thing, so I can put comments into it, so whoever sees it and opens it next can read my comments and work on that Excel sheet and work on whatever needs to get done. But that's gonna do it for the Excel portion of the iPad Pro. Like I said, it's pretty good, it's getting there. I think it's the one that needs to get the most updated for the iPad Pro, but we're getting there. And if you're just a surface level Excel user, I recommend it, but let's go back to the normal view. So like I said, I'm running the beta version of Microsoft Excel. It could be out already, and I'm not 100% sure, um, but I'm testing out the beta version. Overall, it's gotten a lot better. We got multitasking, we got multiple instances of the same app, we got cross app you know, data manipulation, so being able to move things from one side to the other with no hiccups. We have shortcuts in Excel, you know, we have all the different charts and graphs and everything that you would need. So again, for students, I think it's enough. For surface level work, it's enough. For corporate business work, it's enough. It's just a matter of, you know, if you're an accountant, if you're an engineer, if you really need Excel from a database standpoint, or not even that because it works as a database. It's just, it's hard to create from scratch or maybe use pivot tables like I said earlier. But otherwise it works really well and all the functionality is there and it's it works well, especially if you have a supplementary device. But if you're only using an iPad, and you're using Microsoft Excel at a surface level, then I think it'll be 100% fine. It gets my stamp of approval in that area. And like I said, for me, it's fine, it's perfect. I don't need any more, I don't need any additional desktop version of Excel, but if you do need a little bit more, then maybe hold off on using the iPad Pro as your only device or making that commitment. But like I said, overall, Microsoft Office is getting way better. Next up, we're gonna do either OneDrive, Microsoft Teams, or Microsoft Outlook. And I'll continue with that and again, give you guys an overall video on my workflow with Microsoft Office on the iPad Pro. But shout out to Paperlike for always supporting the channel. They're the channel sponsor. First link in the description, guys. Check them out. Highly recommended if you guys are using a pencil or any sort of writing device on your iPad Pro because A, it protects the screen, B, it makes it feel a lot better, and C, also keeps all the glare down too when you're viewing stuff and cons and consuming content. But that's gonna do it for the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time. Peace.